you're reviewing your patient's chart and you notice that they're on dual antiplatelet therapy, aka DAPT, and you think, hmm, why is this patient on these two meds? Should I keep both the aspirin and the P2I12 inhibitor? Let's get into this whiteboard animation to shed some light. First, when you ask yourself, why is a patient on DAPT and there isn't a clear, obvious reason? Remember, there are two guideline-based indications. One, your patient had an acute coronary syndrome event, ACS, or your patient had a stent placed in the cath lab either for ACS or stable angina. Now, you may be thinking, there is no way it's that clear-cut, and you're right. The third group of patients on DAPT are people who have high atherosclerotic burden. So think about your patients with peripheral artery disease, prior stroke, multiple coronary events. So you figure out why your patient is on DAP to begin with. Now you're thinking, why are they on clopidogrel, not on prasugrel or ticagrel? Or what's the difference anyway? Aren't they all P2I12 inhibitors? We got to consider potency versus bleeding risk. So prasugrel and ticagrel are more potent, meaning that they're better at preventing ischemic events, but that also comes with higher bleeding risk. Prasugrel and ticagrel are fast acting, so they may be used more acutely during an ACS event, but oftentimes it comes down to cost. Prasugrel is more expensive and clopidogrel is the least. So now that you have a clear idea why your patient's on DAPT and why they're on that specific P2Y12 inhibitor, how long should they stay on DAPT anyways? So the timeline really depends on the indication for DAPT. If your patient was on DAPT post-stent for a stable ischemic disease, then we tend to keep them on for about six months or so. But if your patient had a true acute coronary syndrome event with or without stent placement, we tend to keep them on DAPT longer, about 12 months or so. The reason why it's longer is because ACS does have a much higher thrombotic risk. Two caveats to keep in mind is that this is not a hard and fast. We do titrate how many months we keep patients on DAPT depending on their bleeding or ischemic risk. The duration of DAPT is also a moving target. The latest guidelines haven't caught up to the latest trials, right? There is some data coming out that we can stop DAPT as early as three to six months or even as early as one month. So it's finally time to transition from DAPT to monotherapy. Should you stop the aspirin or the P2I12 inhibitor? The truth is there's no clear guideline recommendations, but what's surprising to many is that despite aspirin being called quote unquote baby aspirin, aspirin actually has higher risk theoretically. The reason is because both aspirin and P2I12 inhibitors block platelets, yes, but aspirin is also a COX inhibitor, so it blocks prostaglandin production, so the gastric mucosa loses some of that protection without prostaglandins. So aspirin is associated with higher bleeding risk compared to P2I12 inhibitors. But again, at the end of the day, no matter which you stop, you're technically not wrong, but it may be safer to stop the aspirin. Okay. Just when you thought you could handle any case, in walks in a patient who's on aspirin, prasugrel, and rivaroxaban. Now what? So we have to remember that aspirin and prasugrel are antiplatelet agents, and things like rivaroxaban, apixaban, anoxaparin, warfarin are anticoagulants, so usually being used for things like AFib, DVT, and PEs. You may be hesitant to stop triple therapy, but triple therapy is associated with increased bleeding risk. So long-term, it's best to keep the anticoagulant for the AFib or the PE history and drop one of the antiplatelets. So which antiplatelet should you drop, the aspirin or the P2I12 inhibitor? So the only regimen that's been tested is dropping aspirin and continuing the P2I12 inhibitor. And the P2I12 inhibitor that's been tested is clopidogrel, so that's often what we see in practice. And so then how long do you keep that anticoagulant and antiplatelet therapy on for? Again, as a throwback to earlier, A rule of thumb is generally 12 months, but for a stent for stable ischemic disease, the duration is about six months or so. Let's recap. In terms of indications for ADAPT, your patient either suffered an acute coronary syndrome event, ACS, or had a stent placed for stable ischemic coronary disease, or has high atherosclerotic burden, think about peripheral artery disease, multiple coronary events. Next, remember Tigagrelor and Prasugrel are more potent and have more bleeding risk, but ultimately a lot of the decisions come down to cost and clopidogrel is more affordable. Then in terms of the duration of DAPT, most patients who had an, a true acute coronary syndrome event will be on DAPT for at least 12 months or so, while patients who had a stent placed for stable ischemic coronary disease may require DAPT for six months or so, but again, that's a moving target. 
in terms of transitioning from DAPT to monotherapy, there's no clear guidelines. Oftentimes we'll see aspirin dropped and keeping the P2Y12 inhibitor. And lastly, if your patient needs to be on an anticoagulant, we do try to limit the amount of time a patient is on triple therapy. And so dual therapy with an anticoagulant and antiplatelet is preferred. All right, that's a wrap for today. Please subscribe for more whiteboard animations and take a listen to the original DAPT episode on whatever podcast app you use. Take care.